Hello, and welcome once again to our video uh, or virtual classroom. Uh, this video is in reference to uh, the lesson for Wednesday, April 15th. And in this lesson, we will be going over box blocks. And uh, having said that, ladies and gentlemen, this lesson is a direct um, continuation of the previous two lessons, which was interquartile range. And so if you're still having trouble with that, or if you haven't done that uh, yet, please do that first, get familiar with that, and then come back and see this video. Now also, as you see this video, I strongly encourage you to follow along with the notes that I put in the folder right below this video on Schoology. I will be closely following that. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll be using that as my template for what we're going to be doing today. So again, today we're going to be going over box plots. This is one of those lessons that we are going to essentially be doing it. Um, I'm going to be teaching the lesson as we do the assignment. And so uh, we are going to be in uh, Springboard in our textbook, which is SP 30-1, page 391 to 396. And uh, you'll see that in a second once I pull up the notes. Uh, before I do so, or, or rather, I, I want to give you an opportunity to open that up. And let me share my screen really fast. Okay. So as I share my screen, this is page 391. And we will begin with number one. And again, today we're going to be going over box plots. Uh, kind of jumping off of what we just learned uh, about interquartile range. And so um, as we learn about box plots, we're going to be using this example, which is a table giving us the number of home runs per year uh, made by each one of these two players. So this is really just one table. It's just a, a really long table, so they split it into two columns. So if you notice, we have the year right here, and then we have the home runs that Aaron uh, this would be Henry Hank Aaron. Uh, so here this first column is his home runs. And then in the second column, we have Kilbrew, and that would be Harmon Kilbrew, and these are his home runs. So again, this is just one really long table split in two because it was really long. And so for numbers one and two specifically, we will be using that table okay so as i i'm gonna right now i'm gonna show my notes uh and so if you ask where did you get those numbers mr lugo uh well uh, i got those numbers from this table uh and this other table for number two uh so having said that let me share my notes with you And you should be able to see my notes now. Yes, here we go. All right, uh, and so uh, your notes should look something like this, or if you're looking at our notes online, uh, you will see this exactly actually. So again, we're in SP 30-1 uh, box plots, and this is the page number. So please have that open in a different page uh, or follow along uh, in your textbook, page 391 to 396. And uh, we're gonna begin with numbers one and two. Uh, and this is our 54th lesson, uh, hence why I have the 54th there. All right, so we saw that really long table. And so we're going to work with Aaron first. And after that, uh, we are going to be working with uh, Kilbrew. So if you notice, on even though I put it on two different pages, uh, it was just a lot of information. So I separated the two. So over here in the first page of notes, I have the numbers for Aaron. And I copied those down just as they were um in chronological order meaning i just took the numbers down date by date and i went down now we know that when we're working with data since we're first going to be working with Aaron's data uh we need to organize it from least to greatest now i took the liberty of doing that for you uh because it can take quite a while uh but yes i organized all of the data and the first thing that i want you to notice is the number of data points that we have. How many dates did we, t did, did we have data for him? Uh, and again, each one of these numbers represents the number of home runs that Aaron hit in, in that particular year. 
So uh, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. We have 23 data points for Aaron. Uh, and uh, I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but if we look at Kilbrew, same thing. The first thing I did up here is I simply wrote down the numbers on the table. Um, in a chronological order, in other words, just by date, whatever came first. And then I ordered them from least to greatest. And for him, we have 22 values, I believe. Uh, so let's go back and let's work with Aaron first. And the first thing that I want us to do, ladies and gentlemen, is do exactly what we have been doing for the previous two lessons, which is we're gonna find the median, which we know that as Q2, which means quartile two, and then we're going to find Q1, quartile 1. And then we're going to find Q3, which is quartile 3. And so having said that, uh, we're also going to make a dot plot using all of this information. In fact, before I even find the quartiles, uh, let us make the dot plots first. Um, obviously, I already made mine, but let me just re uh, review with you. The first thing that I do is I make where I made a number line, and just make sure that your number line uh, fits all the values. So right here, I can see that my numbers go from 10 to 47, so that is my range. Uh, and so I just made it from zero to 50, so that they would all fit in there. Uh, all right, and then I plotted all the numbers, so I saw a 10, so I put a 10, 12, 12, 13, 13, uh, and so, so on and so forth. And so now I have my dot plot. And so having my dot plot now, um, now that I have my information from least to greatest, I can easily um, find my median. Okay, again, we said we had 23 points. Uh, and so if I follow the process that I did before, uh, I could go and just do that. I feel like that's gonna take a while. So I'm just going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I believe this would be my median. I should have eleven on this side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Correct. So my median, then, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly thirty-four, and specifically this thirty-four, the second thirty-four, because I have eleven points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven to the uh, left of it and 11 to the right of it. Uh, let me just um, make that clear. So that second, oh, come on, that second 34 right here, that is my median. So that is my Q2. All right. Now I'm going to be looking at the lower half and at the upper half to find my Q1 and my Q3. Um, now, uh, if you noticed, we're going to be putting this information on the table, um, here, I will actually, oops, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, you'll see a table later on. Uh, I think in number two, we're going to put that information. Okay. So my Q1 is going to be my lower median. Now I'm not counting this 34 right here because that's right in the middle. Okay. It's not in the lower half or the upper half. It's right in the middle. All right. So. Uh, over here, I should have 11 points, I believe, one, two, three, four, five. I believe it's going to be 26. Yes, I have five on each side. So 26 is my Q1. And my Q3, or my upper median, is going to be 44, I believe. Yes, so 44 would be my Q3. So now I've found my median, which is my Q2 my quartile one, Q1, and my quartile three, which is Q3. Now, what I'm gonna do with that information, ladies and gentlemen, is that if you look at number two, we have a table. And notice that I already gave you the means for both of them. Uh, I don't want us to waste time doing that. Um, Again, to get the mean, you would just add up all the numbers, which is a lot of numbers, and then divide by the number of numbers. So yes, I added those 23 numbers, and then I divided whatever sum I got, I divided by 23, and um, rounded to the tenths, I got 32.8. But um, 
Notice that not only do I have, well, let me first fill in the information that I got. Let me make this smaller. Oh, uh, I don't know if that's gonna help. Okay, so there we go. Now we can see everything. So again, my Q2 we said was this 34 right here. So that is my Q2. So I'm gonna put a 34 down here. Uh, notice that I'm working down here. Now my Q1, Three, four, five. We said it was 26, so that's quartile one, 26, and uh, this is almost too small for me. And my Q3, one, two, three, four, five, we said it was 44, one, two, three, four, five. Yes, so that would be 44. Good. Um, what else? So the minimum. Minimum obviously is the smallest uh, value. So in this case, my minimum would be 10. And you'll see why we're, we're marking that in a little bit. And we have our maximum. Our maximum is 47. 47. So I filled out this table for uh, Aaron. For Aaron. And so next, uh, let's look at uh, Kilburn. So we're going to do the exact same thing for Kilbrew. Okay. So here I organized his data from, sorry, from least to greatest. Uh, and let's find our median. So for him, I believe we have 22 points. So it's going to be, we're going to, since it's an even number, we're going to have two medians. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I believe that these two are going to be, let me just make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, ten. Yes. So we have 26 and 28. 26 and 28. So because I have two numbers, uh, neither of those is the median. The median is going to be the average of those two. So I'm going to add them together and then divide by two. So we're going to do 26 plus 28, and that's going to give us 54. So then 54 divided by 2 is going to give us uh, 27 exactly. So let me so this. Uh, so 27 is the median. It's not 26, it's not 28, but it's 27. And that is my Q2. So I'm going to go back to my table. And for this one, I'm going to put 27. That is my Q2 for Kilbrew. Now let us find the lower median, which is going to be our Q1. Now in this case, I am counting the 26 because the 26 is in the lower half. All right. And I'm going to count this 28 because it is in the upper half. Uh, for the Q3, but for Q1, I'm going to have, so there's 11 points, one, two, three, four, five, I believe it's going to be this one, one, two, three, four, yes, so my Q1 is going to be five, and my Q3 is going to be 44, so that's my Q3, so we have five for Q1, and 44 for Q3. So we have five. And uh, was that 44? Yes, 44 for Q3. Now uh, the minimum uh, over here is zero and the maximum is 49. So we have zero and we have 49. Now in a second, I'm going to erase all this, ladies and gentlemen, so I hope that you are copying this down. Uh, this is number one and number two. Um, now I'm going to be skipping back and forth because we're going to be using these tables and this dot plot for, uh, for some of the other numbers. Um, but if you are following along, you should be answered to, you should be able to answer all of those questions. So if I can just recap, um, I used, I organized both Aaron's and Kilbrew's information from least to greatest. 
and I found my Q2, my Q1, and Q3 for each of those, and all of that information is now down here. Uh, okay. Um, so yes, uh, before I move on, let me stop sharing this for a second. And uh, hopefully you're following along. I encourage you to rewind this part of the video. Um, if you're not uh, understanding it or if you just want to make sure that you are on the same page as what I am. Uh, with that in mind, um, okay, let's move on to our next number. So we did number one and two. So let's go on to number seven. Um, so we made our dot plots. We filled out our table. So now let's go to number seven. We're going to focus on number seven, eight, nine, and ten, I believe. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right, so number seven, uh, we're going to circle the dots that represent the median, first quartile, and third quartile. I'll explain that in a second. Number eight, uh, we're going to count how many dots are in the following intervals. Uh, so how many dots are less than Q1? And here we're talking for Aaron, I believe. Uh, yes, we're focusing on Aaron. Um, and then uh, between Q1 and the median, between median Q3 and greater than Q3. And number nine, uh, what do you notice about the number of dots in, um, in each of the intervals above? Um, we'll explain that in a second. All right, let's focus on number seven and eight. So number seven, we're going to circle the dots that represent the median, first quartile, and third quartile. So that's Q1 and Q3. Uh, remember, the median is Q2. Um, and so let's... Let me share my screen once again. Share content. Screen. All right, so I'm going to clear. If you guys can see this, good. Uh, so I'm going to clear um, all of this. Very good. And I'm going to clear all of this as well. Okay, so if you can see in the bottom of the notes, uh, we are doing number seven. So we are going to, for Aaron, uh, we're going to circle on the dot plot. We're going to circle on the dot plot our Q2, our Q1, and our Q3. And you'll see exactly and then for number eight. We're going to fill this table also for Aaron. So let's go. I'm just going to have this here. We'll, we'll come back to this in a second. So we're going to use this dot plot. Okay. Now remember, this is our Q2, right at 34. Our Q1, we said was 26, I believe. Yep, yep. And our Q3 was 44, one, two, three. It's this one. Yes, so that 44 right there, okay. So let's go to our dot plot and let's first mark our Q2, which is the second 34. So here we have 30, right? Uh, here is our 32. Here's our first 34 and here's our second 34. So there we go. That is my Q2. And I have it in the same color as my Q2. Uh, now the 26, there's only one 26. So it's gonna be this one right here. Here's my Q1. And um, over here, we have a 44. The first 44 is going to be my Q3. So that's right there. Um, now, the question says, so I circled my median, my Q2, my Q1, and my Q3. Question, it's a, question 8 says, count how many dots are in the following intervals. Uh, so let's go to question eight, all right? So how many dots are less than Q1? All right, so we have Q1 right here, and that are less, not at Q1, but less than Q1, we have one, two, three, four, five. We have five dots that are less than Q1, so I'm gonna put five here, okay? How many dots are between Q1 and Q2? First quartile and the second quartile. So the dots are in, in between. We have one, two, three, four, five again. Five again. Now between Q2 and Q3, 
Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five again. And greater more than Q3, we have one, two, three, four, five, uh, or one, two, three, four, five, as we can see up there. Uh, and so again, the answer is five. So number nine, what do you notice? What do you notice about the number of dots in each of these intervals? Well, we notice that it's all, they're all the same. They're all exactly, this, there's the exact same number of dots in between of each of the intervals. And that makes perfect sense, ladies and gentlemen, because each interval is a port, is a quartile. So each of those sections is gonna contain 25% uh, or about a fourth of all the points. So you expect each of these sections to have the same number of points. In other words, when I go back here, no matter how they are spaced out, they are the same number of points right here, right here, right here, and right here. And so, yes, so there are the exact same number of points in between of each of those sections. Um, and here, let me look at next question. Oh yeah, okay, so this is it, this is it. This is where we are going to create our box plot. So now that we have our four tiles and we understand that each section has the same number of points, we're gonna make what is known as a box plot. And same as, as we usually do, we're gonna start with Q2. Now notice, I'm gonna make the box plot down here. I kind of already made my framework for it. Uh, you're gonna see what I mean by that. Um, but we're gonna start with our Q2. And, and I'll make this in orange so that, or yellow really, so that we use the same colors. But we're gonna start with our medium, which we can see right here is at 34. So I'm just gonna make a line at 34. So there is my Q2. Next, uh, I'm going to look at my Q3 and my Q1. And I'm gonna make the edges of the box right there. And then I'm gonna connect all of these to make a box. So notice how that is my middle half. Okay, that is 50% of my points. That is the points that are the 25% that are just below the half and the 25% that is just above the half. So 25 plus 25 is 50, that is half of the points. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to focus on the minimum, which is 10. Let me put it right on there. And the maximum, which was 47, which is right here, okay? And I am just going to put a line to join all of those. And there we go, that is a box plot. Uh, sometimes called a box and whisker plot. Sometimes you'll see the minimum and the maximum will, will have lines, sometimes there'll be dots, but that's generally it. And notice what it shows us, notice what it shows us. It shows us that there is a lot of variance, a lot of variability um, in the first 25%. Um, it shows us that there, in other words, the, the points are, very, are separated uh, by a lot. It shows us that there's not a lot of variability or there's less variability in that second 25% uh, that is between Q1 and Q2. Uh, we see it's a little bit more variability on the, on the third uh, 25%. And then over here, notice how there's also 25% right here, but they're all really close together. So there's very little variability. Um, the points are clustered very close together, just as we see up here in the box plot. All right, um, now I know that that's probably a little confusing, so let's do the same thing with, uh, the, with, uh, with the second um, person here. So again, we made a dot plot for Kilbrew, and for Kilbrew, now we're gonna make a box plot using the same information, all right? So again, our median for Kilbrew, our median was, uh, right here, right between 26 and 28, 26 plus 28 was 54 divided by two was 27. 
All right, so right at 27, notice how we have 25 right here, and then 26 and 27, I am going to make my first line. Uh, notice how the box plot is following the same, I'm using the same number line that I used for my dot plot. You can either do it above or below. I'm doing it below because I have more space there. All right, and then I'm gonna mark where my Q1 uh, and my Q3 was. So let me remake that for you. So again, my Q1 was over here. One, two, three, four, five. So it was five. Uh, let me stay consistent with my colors. And for my Q3, one, two, three, four, five, we have the 44. All right, so uh, right at the five, which is over here on my number line, I am going to make a line to make the first end of my box. And then at the 44, which is over here on my number line, I'm going to make another line uh, to make the other end of the box. And then I'm gonna join those together to make a box. So there is my box. Uh, I can see my Q, Q1, Q2, and Q3 right here. Uh, and again, these are lined up with my Q1, Q2, and Q3 on the number line. Uh, and then my maximum was all the way up here at 49. And so I'm gonna join that right there. And my minimum was zero. Notice how I have several zeros, but the lowest one is zero. And there it is, there's my box plot. That is my box and whisker plot. Um, so yes, notice that this box right here, this represents my interquartile range, uh, the range, the distance between Q1 and Q3. So that is my I, Q, R. And same thing in the previous one, this distance right here, that is your interquartile range. That is uh, the distance between Q1 and Q3. Um, that's essentially it. Uh, let's answer some of the questions together. Um, let me get out of this view really quick, just to change things up a little bit. Okay. So, let me see, why am I not coming out here? Huh. Okay, there we go, sorry about that. Um, all right, so yes, that is box and whisker plots. I encourage you to go to rewind it and watch that again. Um, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna answer a few questions uh, that are gonna come up. And so let me go back to the textbook. Let me share my textbook. Okay. And uh, let's look at number 11. Um, now, I'm not always going to go back to the textbook, but just so you can see where I'm at, I'm getting these from page 394. Number 11, what percent of years did Aaron hit more than 26 whole months? So we're going to be looking at Aaron's uh, dot plot, Aaron's box and whisker plot. Um, and we're going to focus on the number 26. So what percentage of years did Aaron hit uh, more than 26 home runs? Um, and then um, we'll come back to these in a second. So let me show, let's go back to the notes. Okay, so let me clear this. So we're focusing on Aaron and we want to know what percentage of years he hit more than 26. All right, so we have a box plot. Q2, Q1, Q3. All right, so remember that from here to here, this is all 25%. This is another 25%, so this together is 50%, all right? And then here's another 25%, and here's another 25%. So if we want to know how much is more than 26, then we're looking at all of this over here. So we have a 25% here, a 25% here, 25%. So 25 plus 25 plus 25, or 25 times three is 75%.
So that is, ladies and gentlemen, that 75% of the years he hit um, more than 26 home runs. That is essentially what that is telling us to do um, or, or what that is asking for. Um, see, that wasn't very difficult. Let me look at number 12. Uh, so number 12 and 13 is basically, it's asking us to do the same thing that we did for Aaron and to do that for, um, for um, the other guy. I forgot his name. Give me one second, let me look it up. His name was... Kilbrew. 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 Okay. And so same as before, and you're gonna notice a difference here. Um, let me remake this box plot just so that you can see what I'm talking about. All right, so for Kilbrew, again, so we have the median, which was right here, which was right at 27. We have the lower half, one, two, three, which is right here, and the upper half, which is right here. Okay, so let us circle. Notice how 27 is not one of the points. So just at around 27, I'm just gonna put a little circle right there. You can put a line, it doesn't matter. So we know that that is where the median is. Uh, the lower half, we found it to be at five, and it was the second five, so it's gonna be this one right here. And the upper half was right at 44, so it's gonna be um, this one right here. So we have 40 right here. 45 is this line, so then that's 44. Uh, and then we made our box plot. Uh, let me just remake that one more time, just so that you can see. There's my box plot. Okay, so now that I have my box plot, um, uh, we can see that uh, this box is a lot bigger. This box is a lot bigger than what it was in the previous one. All of what that means, ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't mean that there's more points here than there was in the previous box plot in the one for Aaron. No, it just means that the points are more spread out. If you notice, there's actually the same number of points as there was, well, in each one of these sections, there's the same number of points. The, uh, it's just that in this section, in this section right here, uh, there's just more variance. There's, they're more spread out. Whereas in this section over here, there's a lot less variance. They're closer together. Uh, and so what can we say? Well, what can we conclude about uh, Kilmore as opposed to um, as opposed to Aaron? We can conclude that there was a lot more variance uh, in the number of home runs that he hit each year than there was for Aaron. Aaron's were a lot closer together. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything else that I'm missing. Um, I feel like that's pretty much it. Let me look at the next questions. Number 13, uh, 14. Uh, yeah. Number 15, what percent of years did Kilbrew hit less than 27 home runs? So if we look at um, number 15 again, what percentage of years did Kilbrew hit less than 27 home runs? So 27 home runs is right over here. So that's the median. So uh, what percentage is that? Well, if the median is 27, everything less than that, that would be 50%. So 50% of the years. Uh, so if you followed along, uh, you congratulations, you did the whole assignment. But again, it's not just about doing it, it's about understanding it. So I expect you guys to have a lot of questions when you come to the meeting. Uh, and as far as the theme for the meeting, um, we're gonna make it uh, hat, wear your favorite hat, or just wear a crazy hat, or just come wearing a hat. If you, if you come to the meeting wearing a hat, that means that you saw this video and you know you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. All right, uh, yeah, sorry, I know it was a bit of a lengthy video, but uh, this is a brand new topic and hopefully it wasn't too confusing. I will see you at the meeting. Um, let me, how do I get out of this? Um, there we go. And all right, I will see you at the meeting.